Hey guys, this is Alexia Nicole, and you're listening to Shooting Up North. Hello and welcome to Shooting Up North. I am your host, Lewis Carlin. We are heard on the Impact Lounge, and I'm very excited today because I have a very special guest. In addition to numerous Impact Wrestling appearances, she's a well-known face of the Ontario indie scene, and she is the cross-body pro wrestling women's champion. I'm talking about the bubblegum princess herself, Alexia Nicole. Alexia, welcome to the show. Hey, thanks for having me. Hey, my pleasure, my pleasure. So, so how are you holding up with this crazy coronavirus thing that's that's going on right now? Uh, it's day by day. <laughs> like some days are easier than others. I um, I don't have any work right now. Like I got laid off from my own job, so I'm really just, literally just sitting at home looking for things to do. So, some days are easy, some days yeah. not so much. Yeah, I'm kind of with you on that. I uh, I haven't worked for about four weeks now. Hopefully, this whole thing will um. And this whole thing will, will end very soon, and everybody will be able to get back to work. And um, yeah, so it looks like we both have plenty of time, plenty, plenty of plenty of time on our hands, so we're able to, to connect finally and do this do this podcast. Yeah. So let's let's go back to the beginning. Uh, how did it all start for you? When when did you first decide that you wanted to become a, a professional wrestler? Um, I think 2008 ish. I was in elementary school. Like I don't remember exactly how old I was. Um, I was just honestly watch, I watched wrestling a lot. Uh, on TV, I grew up watching it with my brother, and um, I was watching okay. a lot of women's matches, and they were really bad at that time. I think that was like oh, okay. 08. Yeah. Okay. It wasn't a good time for it, and I so just like, thought I could be better than that. Like I thought it should be better than that. I'm like, oh, maybe I can be better than that. So. So, so who are some of your favorites? So, some of your favorites growing up? Uh, Undertaker, Mickey James, Eddie Guerrero, Molly Holly, Edge, Christian, Jericho. Uh, I can keep going, <laughs> to be honest. Um, the list goes okay. on and on, to be honest, yeah. All right, so so once you decided you want to become a pro wrestler, uh, where did you go to training, and, and how did you initially take to that to that training? Um, so I started training at Sports Circle Training. They don't, uh, they're not open anymore, but um, at the time when I started going there, they were known for making women's wrestlers. Like um, the head trainer there, Rob Fuego, he trained alongside Edge and Kristen and Trish, um, they they were all trained by Ron Hutchinson, and then Ed, uh, Rob, uh, he also trained Gail Kim, Angelina Love, Tracy Brooks, and my original first trainer, Taylor Wilde. If you don't mind me saying so, you're you're under five feet tall. Were you a little intimidated because you were probably smaller than than most most people that were training there? Uh, no, because when I started training, we did it was uh, five months of an all girls class with uh, Taylor Wilde, so she's only like five okay. five one. Um, I was the shortest, but maybe about like two, three inches out of all the girls in the class. Okay. So it wasn't intimidating at all. And then by the time I got to the guys, like the main class with everybody, it just, and I, I don't know, I guess having the months of learning the basics and just moving it to, in with everybody and just look, getting more advanced, there was no feeling of like, I'm smaller than everyone. Like it's scary. I was just, if anything, I was the training dummy to see who could do power moves properly. <sighs> And, like, who could lift okay. for a certain thing? Because I was light enough that no one would drop me. So if you had the right technique and you could do it with me, you could probably do it with everybody. <laughs> so uh, so tell me about your first match then. Um, how did you feel entering that ring for the first time? Um, and what, actually walking through the current for the first time and then entering that ring for the first time. How, what, what was going through your, your mind at that at that moment? Um, it was weird because, like, uh, my first match was at um, – it was a Canada Day show – and it was called Tiger Fest. So um, I don't know how many people know about it, but it was in, it's in uh, Brampton in the city in Ontario. And it's like a huge Canada show. And there was like thousands of people and the ring was set up and there's all these bleachers. The bleachers are full. Um, so there was so much going on. It was so much to process. And I'm sitting backstage with guys like Rhino and um, Angelina Love was actually my first opponent. It was a mixed tag match. It was me and Cody 45 against her and one of my other trainers, Marcus. Marcus Marquez and so there was so much like 
happening that it was so hard to process what was going on. I was like, I was nervous, obviously, but when you walk out in front of that many people, there's because there's you don't see individual faces, it, the nerves kind of just went away, which is, I guess, a good thing. Um, but yeah, it's like I, I was super nervous before I went out. And then when I got out there, obviously still a little nervous, but like I was just focused on what I was doing and it went well. So <laughs> that's good. Um, but yeah, no, like the nervousness was there. Um, but there's just so much going on that like I didn't even have time to be as nervous as I could have been. Okay. okay. Well, do you still get nervous today when you're um, when you head into the ring? Oh, yeah. Every time. That's normal. <laughs> that's normal, yeah. I guess. Yeah, so um, so when did you become the Bubblegum Princess, and uh, how did you come up with that gimmick? Um, that started it was, feels like forever ago. I don't even remember when exactly that started. I was just um, I was backstage at a Smash show, and um, I have this habit where I used to grind my teeth. So to not grind my teeth, I chew gum. Uh, I one day I, just, I was chewing bubble gum because that's all I had. Um, and I had to cut a promo. So I used the gum as like a part of my promo just because why not? And everybody loved it and it worked. And that's literally how it happened. <laughs> that just from there, people took to it and I realized it was something that people liked and I just went with it from there. Actually, the first time I saw you um, was at uh, the Smash show, the, the Candice 2017 show against Jordan Grace. Uh, I thought that was a terrific match. That was actually the first time I saw Jordan Grace as well. Um, do you remember much about that match and, and what your thoughts on that match was? That match was so much fun. Um, I had never met Jordan before that. Um, I remember going into it like being a little bit nervous because I had seen a lot of, of her. And we're the same age, but she'd already been wrestling way longer than I had and had been everywhere. Um, so it was a little intimidating, but like I got there... We got the match together so quickly and everything went so well and it was just like that's probably one of my favorite matches like definitely has a lot of like really good moments in it and then we wrestled again um this past uh SummerSlam weekend uh yeah. for I believe it was Progress versus Smash show um and it was even better. Like, that match got was even better. And I didn't even think we could top the first one we had. So that was nice. You also had a match in Impact Wrestling. It, was, it wasn't it um, was as good as the as the, uh, the Canusa match. Uh, but um, what, what, led to your impact, what led to your appearances in Impact Wrestling? I know you've had a number of appearances with Impact Wrestling. Um, they've, been, they've been pretty good. Like, I, um, Impact's a pretty, pretty good place to work. Like, I'm very thankful for the opportunities. Um, every back... Everyone backstage is pretty nice. I um I definitely I usually just stick to talking to who I know. I wish I could say like everyone's great, and I'm sure they are. I just I don't really I you really I'm shy. I stick to the people I know. Um, okay. But they've been yeah great opportunities. Uh, they came out of nowhere really. I just got a message from Scott Demore one day saying, hey, do you want to come do this? And it went from there. Um, I'm not signed to anything. Uh, I know a lot of people are at, like think I am. I'm not. I'm, <laughs> I'm not signed anywhere. Um, but yeah, like I'm really thankful for Impact. It's helped me help me learn a lot, help me um, understand, characterize what I wanted to do, um, help me really like define my move set too. So. Yeah, I was going to ask you your current status, cause, uh, but you, you just answered the question. I was going to ask if there's any talk of a contract. I think you'll be fantastic in Impact Wrestling, and, and a lot of people that I speak to feel the same way. Uh, do you think some somewhere down the road you, you might get a contract uh, for Impact Wrestling? I mean, hopefully. Like, I, My goal in wrestling is to live off of wrestling, and that would definitely be a step forward. But uh, at the time, I, right now, I just don't think that's – gonna happen i don't know if it might happen who knows i, I don't want to say it will or won't i obviously i want it to um we'll see i don't know who knows okay well i'll keep my fingers crossed for you uh like i said uh, a lot of people including myself think it would be fantastic a uh, fantastic addition to the knockout roster now you, know, you were an undead bride weren't you um, yes before him yeah. yeah i remember I, yeah i think i i think i sent you a message on that i was with uh, my friends in um in winter and the uh, when the undead brides were coming out uh one of my friends he said oh, that's got to be alexi nicole i said why he's like look <laughs> at this look look how short look, look how yeah. short that one is <laughs> um and then when you, you saw the, the saw the face i was like yeah that's definitely alexi nicole so what was that like um did you did you enjoy being an undead bride it was fun it was a lot of fun like um Sue actually, she did the make like she was literally telling me what to do as she's putting the makeup on my face. So it was kind of interesting. 
Um, but it was a lot of fun. It was something that I kind of wanted to do because it just it's so different from what I am as a performer. You, um, it's like complete opposite spectrum of the way I present myself. So that was really cool to see. And like, I felt like that was a good way for me to get used to being on impact because if I had just gone out there before I had the matches with Jordan, before I did, you know, had the matches with Madison, um, I definitely would have felt a little more overwhelmed than I did had I not had that chance to be out there as essentially just as an extra, um, really seeing the setup and learning how everything works backstage before I went out there as a wrestler. So tell me about the Rough Riders. The Rough Riders. That was a, a fun <laughs> little group. Uh, who who came up with that idea? And uh, and and you look like everybody looked like they were having a lot of fun uh, being a Rough Rider. <laughs> that was such a fun show. That was probably like my favorite Impact moment that I've done. Um, I'm pretty sure it was Jimmy Jacobs' idea. Um, so originally I wasn't supposed to be in the Rough Riders. It was supposed to be Kira Hogan. Um, she had gotten hurt a couple nights before at one of the tapings. So they asked me last minute if I would take her place. And from there, I uh, showed up on the Sunday for the, the, uh, the impact show for the, um, the, play, the throwback show. And you get there and you just see everyone's names has like this weird character next to it. And there's all these costumes and props. It was that was like one of the most fun nights I've had in wrestling because we just got to be these super silly over the top characters. Yeah, that was definitely definitely a fun show. I hope I hope we see the Rough Riders again. Uh, you guys were a great group, and you were victorious as well. Uh, so hopefully uh, down the road we'll see the Rough Riders uh, r- ride once again. Uh, that was great, great stuff. Uh, is there anybody in Impact that you would like to face? Uh, maybe Tessa Blanchard, uh, um, anyone that you would like to go one-on-one with? Uh, definitely Tessa. Uh, I'd like to face Kylie Ray now that she's uh, just signed with Impact. Um, who else haven't I see? The thing is, I've actually wrestled a lot of the girls at Impact. <laughs> like I've wrestled sure. too young at Crossbody already. And that was like a that was a really fun match. It's on IWTV right now. Actually, it was a lot of fun. Um, I wrestled Rosemary a bunch of times. I've already wrestled Jordan a bunch of times. And these are all matches I'd like to have again. Um, sure. I wrestled Madison. That was a lot of fun. That was kind of like I don't even know what the word is. A little, I was a little bit starstruck because like I would watch Madison on TV when I was like just watching wrestling as a fan and started training so to actually work with her that was insane to me um but yeah like definitely Tess is at the top of that list I'd like to wrestle Taya one-on-one Jessica Havoc one-on-one Kylie one-on-one yeah you, you mentioned the Sue Young match uh for crossbody I was going to talk about that a little later but since you mentioned it uh let's go into it a great great match I, I watched it uh, like I said it's on IWTV um, what was it? I was thinking, what, what's it like? You were you were an undead bride, and and here you are now. You're defending the crossbody um, women's title against against Sue Young. That that must have been a great feeling. It was, and like the best part was like getting to meet Sue before I wrestled her because a lot of times when I wrestle someone for the first time, there's a pretty good chance I've never met them before just because like especially in Ontario, there's so few girls. So when there's a new girl that comes like someone new for me to face, it's like oh cool, I've never met you, so I don't know like how our chemistry is going to be getting to meet Sue and like talk to her a bit. And like, we got along right away, which was good. So we had ideas to bounce off of each other, like right away. And it, like it just came together so well and so organically. And like, I'm really happy with the way the match went because it was pretty different from most matches that I've had. Like it was, it wasn't just a, a very basic structure, which I typically tend to tend to stick to. Um, and it was fun. Like we had, other undead bridesmaids. We had Crystal Moon run in and end up being the referee for the end of the rest of the match. Yeah. Um, we did some like we took some hard bumps and I don't know why we did them because <laughs> that venue was so <laughs> hot. Like it was August, there was no air conditioning. We were the main, so everything was like sweaty already. Um, but it was a lot of fun and like I, I think Ben Orman all the time. He uh, he runs Crossbody to for, for yeah. that match and for every match he's given me. Like he's really trusted me with a lot and I really appreciate it. So when did you start? I know Crossbody, great promotion. When did you start with them? You mentioned uh, Ben Ortman's. Um, when was the first time he came in, and uh, wh- how does it feel being uh, the women's champion for for a great indie promotion? I think t- early 2019 was the first time. I, I remember I did a couple of showcase shows. Um, so every other Friday they have like a showcase show where they just um, the show is instantly uploaded on YouTube for anyone who doesn't know. Um, and it's, it's a lot of up and coming wrestlers. Sometimes there'll be some familiar faces on there. Um, 
it's but it's mostly local guys and just really tr like trying out new things seeing what works what doesn't and you can the best my favorite paper about you can see the um i sorry my favorite part you can see the improvement of a lot of the younger guys and how they get better over time but that's how i started i just asked them like hey um i'm not really wrestling a lot just because i've been going through some through some personal stuff um okay can i get on this show and he was all for it um had a couple matches on there he asked me to be a part of the main shows and like i said he, he really trusted me with his women's division which i really appreciate and um yeah from there we just took off have but i bounce ideas off him he bounces ideas off of me and um it's really i want his this woman's division to really mean something because there's not because like i said there's not a lot of women in ontario so if i can make one place have like a really standout division where a lot of girls come in and they want to work that'd be great what are you what are your thoughts on crystal moon i know she ran in she was the referee for this new young match what, what are your what are your thoughts on uh, crystal moon i really like crystal she you i can tell the how hard she tries and i've seen how much she's improved and it's and like it makes me happy to see how much she's improved and how hard she's trying because it shows me that she really wants to get better. She really wants to be good. And sometimes like it's just a bit of a stereotype, but yes, there are people who get into wrestling to just be famous. They don't care how good they are. And I've definitely met them. I know I've met them. I wrestled some of them. Um, okay. To see that she actually has the passion and the drive to be good and get better and learn. And like every time I wrestle her, our matches get better and better. And that's my favorite thing. I love working with people where we just get better together. Another match I liked at Crossbody a lot was you against Kobe Durst. Could you tell me a little <laughs> bit about that match and a little bit about Kobe Durst? Kobe, um, oh my God, he's changed so much. He's gotten so, so good. We, uh, yeah. He started around the same time I did. And just to see him, because we're all, like, a lot of people I started with, we're all kind of around the same age. So just to see everyone, like, grow up, too, it's crazy to me. Because um, he's really grown so much. And we... Um, I remember I almost canceled that day. Um, I was feeling really sick. I had laryngitis. I was starting to get better, but like you can kind of hear my voice in the match. I sound awful. <laughs> like I sound like I've got a frog in my throat. It's terrible. Um, but I talked to both Ben and Kobe the morning of, and we we talked about it. We're like, you know what? We're not going to do anything crazy. It'll be fine. We'll just go out there. We'll have a good match, and then. We got there, and I'm talking to Kobe, and things instantly got crazy. Um, yeah. But it was good, and he's he's so easy to work with. He's so he's down to do anything, and he knows what he's really good at, and like how to really make the crowd react to things, which is great because sometimes you just don't know what's going to happen. So if something goes wrong, he instantly knows. Okay, we can do this instead. They'll go for it. Um, and it, it worked and that match went really well. And I was like, especially nervous for that because I wasn't feeling well. I'm like, I don't know how well I'll perform. I don't know if I can keep up with him. And he really helped me stay, stay with him and keep pace with him. And yeah, like, I think I just watched the match back, like, I think last week. And I remember I, I liked it. I wasn't upset about yeah. it or anything. Yeah. No, it was a great, great match. I mean, I, I love Kobe Durst. He's very, very talented. And you went, like, for somebody who wasn't feeling well, you went right at him right from the beginning. So that was a, that was a great um, great match there. Uh, so who else who, who else would you like to defend your title um, in Crossbody? Maybe maybe Jody Threats. Uh, who, who else would you like to defend your title against? Uh, I'd like to defend against Jody Threat. Me and Jody wrestle everywhere. And, like, yeah. <clears throat> sorry. Yeah. Um, me and Jody wrestle everywhere, so it'd be cool to wrestle there since we haven't yet. Um, I don't know to be honest, because like I know Ben has some surprises for me of people he wants, girls he wants to bring in and have me work with. So I don't want to say anything in case something gets messed up when everything goes back to normal. <laughs> okay, <laughs> but I'm open. Hey, hey, yeah, I'm enough. open to fair anything. Enough. I'm open hey. to anyone. What um What are your thoughts on Tessa Blanchard being the the world, um, the Impact World Champion. I know a lot of people, they, they think it's 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 not a good thing. Uh, myself, I think it's fantastic. Uh, but what what are your what are your thoughts on her being the world champion? I think it's cool. I, I don't think there's anything wrong with it. My only opinion on it, because like let's face it, she is the best wrestler, she, or if, if not the best, she's one of the best, hands down. Like there's very few people that can top her. She's on a very different level than most people. Her in ring work, her promo work, even like her 
her expressions. They're, they're really, really good. Um, my only thing is I don't think she can go back to working other knockouts, or if she does, there shouldn't be just a knockouts division. I think at that point, anyone can hold the world title for impact. Not like any woman can, any guy can. There's no division of who and who can't and who can. Because I do think if she goes back to wrestling the knockouts, she should just beat everybody. If they're if those knockouts aren't going to cha- challenge for the world title. But that's exactly. my only opinion on it. Like I don't think it's a bad thing that she's champion because, like I said, I think she's great and she deserves it. Um, but she can't lose. She can't go challenge for the knockouts title and lose unless the whoever the knockout champion is is going to beat her for the world title. No, absolutely. I agree with you 100%. Uh, Because I know they had um, Tessa against Taya, and a lot of people were going crazy that two women in a world title match. I think, I was like, these are athletes in the ring. It's it's, it's not a big deal. Uh, But uh, but no, excellent point. I mean, if she goes back to the knockout division, she has to be undefeated. Um, she'd be be hard to see her lose, and and then anyone could be. A, you, I mean, you could. I mean, they could sign you. You could be the the next Impact Wrestling World Champion. You know, you never know. The, Maybe the, the it's possible. Right <laughs> it can happen. It can happen. <laughs> yeah, no, absolutely. So, what would you say, like, if someone said to you a woman should not be World Champion? Like, how would how would you react to that if someone if if you were uh, sitting down with somebody and they said ah, a woman shouldn't be World Champion? Like, what what, what would you what would you say to them? I don't know everyone's got their own opinions on wrestling like yeah it's i mean we all know at the end of the day it's not real yeah we just what <laughs> wait a minute it's not real <laughs> we all <laughs> sorry to burst your bubble um, oh damn alexia <laughs> no i'm only kidding um, go ahead go ahead <laughs> yeah like we know at the end of the day it's not real but like tesla for example just because she is right now the world champion very convincing as a world champion if you tell me that, like, oh, what's a good example? Um, like, look, yes, if you had told me that Stacey Keebler was, like, the WWE champion, yeah, I would tell you that's probably insane and shouldn't happen. Just because, okay, like, realistically, if I was to, she doesn't look, she, like, she doesn't, God, now I feel like I'm bashing on her. My point is, it's not believable if she were to do it. You no, get what I mean? I, I got. I understand. Like I understand like exactly were, what you're saying. I understand exactly what you're saying. Uh, um, but like Tesla, who is someone who it's very believable that she could be a world champion. Um, I guess that would be my only argument on it. People believe what they want yeah. to believe, to be honest. And I don't try to force someone to like anything about wrestling. Like I, had, I know people that hate when I do intergender. They hate it because they think it's not. Believable. That was going to be my next question. And what, yeah. what do you feel about? Um, I know people that hate it, and I know people that love it. I personally, I love doing it. I okay. think it's a lot of fun. It's different for me. Girls are much different it's just in the way, and it's, I think it's just a biological thing. I find girls move differently than guys. I know I move differently than a lot of guys. Um, but it makes for some interesting matchups. We have, guys and girls have different strengths than each other, and I think they're a lot of fun. I like having them, but this is not for some people. Like, But there's nothing you can do about that. If you don't like it, that's your thing. You can't for somebody to not like it. Just like there's people that didn't like um, the Boneyard match at WrestleMania. I thought it was the greatest thing ever. But there's some people okay. who just aren't going to like it. <laughs> no, absolutely true. Absolutely true. I, To me, professional wrestling is professional wrestling. I don't care who's in the ring. Uh, but um, but you mentioned the intergender match. One match that I really enjoy that you were involved in uh, was for Kaisen Pro Wrestling, Kobe Christ and Gabriel Fuerza. Uh, that, was, that was a terrific match. Um, and that must have been a long drive to get there too. I think you were traveling, if I'm not mistaken. I think with with Holden Albright, um, Pretty Ricky, and Gabriel Fuerza. So that must have been an interesting drive. So maybe do you have any good stories about that drive? That that had to be like a 14 hour drive back. And oh my forth. god, I have so many stories. All right, that, go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> so that week, just so, that weekend alone, um, that was the weekend where there was a hurricane in the um that's right that's right in yeah. nova scotia yeah so already we're driving down they're like oh there's a hurricane whatever um but we left the thursday i want to say the thursday afternoon what day was the kaizen show was it i believe it was friday night so we left the thursday afternoon we got to the uh, venue half an hour before the show started our match was first um driving there i can't even remember if it was the thursday night or like the friday during the day i got pulled over for speeding um, pretty Ricky went through a, um, 
<laughs> he got caught on like a, those speed cameras when you're going too fast. So he got caught for that. Um, oh my, there's just, I know Holden Albright, he's, we recorded a bunch of podcasts and like recorded a ton of like video clips. Like he had his camera rolling the entire time. We literally have like yep. just endless hours. On the way back home, we had, um, well, on the way back home, we were driving, trying to get out of the hurricane. Because we, the Saturday morning, we, I woke up there first. I think I woke up at like nine-ish. I'd go to turn the lights on in the bathroom and the lights aren't turning on. So okay. already, I'm like, okay, this is weird. I go look out the window. It's raining. It's windy. It looks like the world's ending. So I just, I literally just stared at it for a second. I'm like, okay, time to wake everybody up. Or we got to go now. <laughs> 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 so woke everybody up we're literally driving against the hurricane we stopped at so many walmarts just trying to find like food and water and everything was gone because like people are trying to stock up for themselves and we're just like we just want to sure. drink something to get home sure. <laughs> yeah. um but yeah and we uh, on the way home we recorded i want to like at least three or four podcasts on like conspiracy theories um yeah, there's so many stories. We stopped at a, a mall in Quebec that had like a huge theme park, and so we wanted to get home like by like a reasonable time. I don't think we got home till like two in the morning because of that, because we spent so much time there. <laughs> it um, but like it was the best. Like that was that's hands down my favorite wrestling road trip, and I really want to do it again. So I'm hoping everything with this virus ends soon because I'd really like to head out back that way with those guys and just do it all over again. Oh yeah, I would. I would. You. You be. Uh, I, I hope you become a regular at Kaizen Pro Wrestling. That's that's a great little promotion, and and you fit in there uh, very nicely. Uh, but how how many um how many white monsters did uh, Holden Albright drink during that drive? Oh my God, I don't know. <laughs> I didn't keep track, but he gets them every show we go to. Like we're on so many shows together, we drive together a lot, and he gets a case every time. And, like, he literally has to hand them off to people because he even he knows he can't drink them all. Like, it's so many monsters. Yeah. So many monsters. Yeah, he, he's he's asked me a number of times, uh, if he comes to the show, bring bring two or three monsters for me. So um, <laughs> so I, I do. Uh, I don't know if you remember, I was at the at the crossbody, um, uh, the Taco Fest match uh, when um, Holden Albright was in the ring with you. And I think it was Fuerza was your yeah. um, partner. And I'm, I'm in the front row and... and and Holden Albright's in the ring, and he and he looks sees me. He's like, "Do you have my monsters?" Oh, I remember that. Yeah. Yeah, and I because <laughs> he came you, back I, after. He's like, "I think I'm getting more monsters." Yeah, no, I went. I got him. I got him three more monsters. So <laughs> that was great stuff. Um, yeah, so that must have been uh, pretty. Ricky must have. It must have been wild. Uh, I know. I've had him on the show a few times. It must have been um, wild uh, being with Pretty Ricky as well. Like, that guy is. He's so talented as well. He's um, so talented. He's so funny, and like. One thing from that trip that we, like, the four of us really, connect, like, bonded on was toy collecting. Because Pretty Ricky and Holden Albright were, like, super into collecting. Pretty Ricky the most was really into collecting toys. And then Holden Albright, I'd say, is, like, right underneath them with that. Um, okay. And me and Fuerza, like, we stopped at every Toys R Us we saw. And we just looked at all the toys. And, like, we literally filled our car up with toys. We had no room <laughs> on the way back. But it was such a good, like, bonding experience. And we're all so close now, so it's really nice. Yeah, no, and uh, again, I hope I see you guys out there again uh, soon. Um, I'd love to, I'd, I'd love to see you one on one with Kobe Christ. I think that would be a, that would be a great match. Um, so tell me about your experience. You had, actually, you challenged for the NWA Women's Championship against Jazz uh, for Greek Town. Uh, so tell me about that experience, uh, challenging for that uh, prestigious title. Uh, it just kind of happened. <laughs> I literally, I just, I got asked, who do you want to wrestle? I'm like, oh, maybe Jazz, and it just. And then I get a, ended up wrestling jazz. Um, okay. I definitely didn't expect a rematch, um, which was really cool to have that. The first one, the first time we wrestled, it just couldn't have gone better. Um, I was like, at that point in uh, 2018, it was like a really bad point for me. Um, so to have that match happen, that was in December of 2018, and that was like my lowest. So that was really, really like helpful for me just go out there have a great match killed it she even like that night she's like oh, let's do it again and i was like okay cool yeah let's let's do it again um yeah. like all nervous and like excited at the same time and then we got the chance to have the two out of three falls match and i can say i'm the only person to have ever pinned her even if it didn't win me the title <laughs> 
I'm sorry, you, you just broke up there for a second. You were the first sorry. person to I was to, first person to, to pin you said I'm the first person, and then you kind of broke up. Um, I was the first person to actually ever pin her, and then I am so I'm pretty much the only oh, okay. person that's ever pinned Jazz for the title. But it was a two out of three falls, so didn't actually win it. Yeah, that's actually that. I was watching that match uh, before um, uh, earlier today, and um, that was a very, very good match. I was also watching the strap match against um, uh, Allison, um, Allison K. That was um, that was another. Uh, did I put that? Is that her name? Allison. I Allison that right. K. Yeah. Yeah. yeah okay. It's Allison K. I like. Oh, I'll probably get her name wrong. But I know that was another. That was another good one as well. So, um, do, you, do you have a favorite promotion that you work for? I know you work for so many promotions. Um. Uh, without getting hard. in trouble, without getting in trouble. <laughs> I think, oh my God, what is my favorite promotion? I think right now Crossbody might be my favorite. It's hard to say. Like, um, two of my like for sure favorite places to work are Crossbody and Barry Wrestling, but it's also because I'm surrounded by NC4 Wrestling. Um, it's because I'm surrounded by all my friends. Like, we all get to travel to these places together. We all work there together, and we all like we just. We uh, we have a good time getting there and being there together, and we help each other out while we're there. Um, but and then they're also great places to perform. Like Barry, I've I've literally watched Barry. It's like come, start off as a very small promotion to get bigger and bigger and bigger, and it's continuing to grow. Crossbody, I've just to get to be a part of its growth has been great. And C4, when I started wrestling, C4 was the show, and I still think it is like the top promotion in Canada. So when, to be on C4 now regularly is like. It's, I don't want to say a dream come true, but like it's pretty cool to be on the top show. Yeah, it's a, every every time I see a C4 show, it's it, it they're so entertaining. They're they're amongst the best, if not the best promotion in Ontario right now. Um, so who has been your who has been your your all time favorite opponents? Who was you? Uh, I would say your toughest opponent and your favorite old, and your favorite opponent to, to be in the ring with. Oh my god, um, I think Kobe might be my toughest just because like. Okay. There's literally a point in their match where he's like, "Okay, just whip me." So I whipped him, and then I, you can see it on the, on the, you can see it during the match. I literally, I'm shocked when he just dives out of the ring onto nobody, and you just see my shocked face. I'm like, "Oh, I didn't expect that to happen." Um, but he's definitely the toughest, and like he was willing to take anything and everything, and just like keep getting back up for more. Um, but as for my favorite, I don't, I don't know. Um, I think Fuerza might be my favorite to work with. And this is very biased because, like, we're super, super close. Okay. But, um, yeah, he he always challenges me. And he he's well, he knows that he's challenging me, but he pushes me because he thinks I can be much better. And he pushes me because he wants me to be better. And it's helped me become a lot better, and I really appreciate that. And our matches okay. are, even when I don't think they go well, they're still good. Like, I can mess up royally and just feel so bad about it after and i'll watch it back with him and it'll be good and because he's also very good at taking a situation if something goes wrong and fixing it immediately um so i would say yeah he's definitely my favorite what about dream opponents do you have any uh dream opponents you'd like to to go one-on-one on one with um i it's hard to say <laughs> Uh, like, I guess pretty much anyone I haven't wrestled yet that, like, okay. I watched as a kid. Like, anyone I watched, for sure, I'd like to wrestle. Like, I'd love to wrestle Mickey. I'd love to wrestle Gail. Um, who else? Sasha Banks I'd like to wrestle. Io Shirai, Kairi Sane, Asuka. Like, I can literally just name names all day. <laughs> okay. So, basically, anyone you haven't wrestled yet, you like to step in the ring with? Yeah, like, I like, okay. dif- I like okay. working with different people. All right, cool. What about working in different countries? Uh, have you worked outside of Canada yet, or are you still hoping to do that one day? Uh, I did a lot of work in the States when I was starting out, and then I stayed in Canada, and I've started to branch out to the U.S. again. It's just it's a little harder just because, like, again, I'm not signed to any company. I don't have a work visa. Um, for a long time, because I started so young, I was in school, so I couldn't just pick up and leave for three months and go to the U.K. or go to Japan or go to Mexico. Um uh, now that I'm not doing that, I'm hoping that I can. Um, it just it's, it's just it's all timing, really. I'd like to wrestle all over the world if I can. Um, I just timing's got to work out right for me. And what would you say is the proudest moment of your career so far? Um, I don't know. B- 
being being on this <laughs> podcast, right? I mean, that's one of them. Um, I don't. No, I, I'm just kidding. I'm kidding. I'm I think kidding. one of my proudest <laughs> moments. Uh, in February, I won the Femme Fatale Women's Championship. Well, I guess the Femme Fatale Championship because okay. it's an all women's promotion. Uh, I think that might be my proudest, okay. just because like I remember being backstage before I went up for my match and seeing like Mephisto and Kimberly and Eva Lee, and I'm like, oh, I'm in a I'm in the main event championship match and you guys aren't like something feels weird about this to me um and then when I won the belt I didn't expect such a huge like positive reaction to it and it did and everyone was like really happy that I won and congratulating me and it just felt like everything I had been doing because you always like I always question if if, when I'm doing working like is this really good are people just telling me it's good you don't know, especially as a girl. You don't know because people are going to lie to you and tell you you're good even if you're not. Um, but just to have that ovation and, like, even afterwards, like, the amount of messages I came back to of people that had just literally just seen it on Twitter and were so happy for me. I was just like, oh, my God, like, this is probably, like, I guess my proudest moment. Well, I will say that when, when I when I say that you're good, I'm being genuine, okay? <laughs> I, 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 I'm serious. I really mean it when I say that you're 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 very, very good and uh, like I said, I I you would be fantastic at impact wrestling and hope hopefully you'll get that three year contract. I know Scott DeMore likes to jump in the ring and hand out three year contracts. <laughs> uh, so hopefully you'll 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 get that uh, one day. Um but what do you see yourself five years from now? How old will I be five years from now? I will be <laughs> um, I will be 29 five years from now. Oh, okay, yeah, I, I, won't, I won't be totally broken by then, hopefully. So we're still wrestling, ideally. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah, still wrestling, again, hopefully for a living. If not, you know, wrestling whenever I can. Um, just having fun. Like, I hate, I love, my life right now, like, virus aside, being stuck inside, like, that aside from everything else, um, pretty great. Like I have a job that I enjoy that l- allows me to wrestle and I don't have to worry about, you know, I can't take too many days off. I have the best friends in the world. Like my life's pretty okay. good right now. Um, so hopefully things just get better and better in five years. And yeah. Hopefully I am wrestling on TV in five years. We'll see. Yeah, you, you will be, trust me. You'll be, <laughs> you'll be on, you'll be on TV in five years. Uh, so before we wrap this up, is there anything you want to plug? Any t-shirts, any, any social media, anything you want to plug? If, Anything you have, feel free to, to plug away. Uh, so I do have 8x10s for sale. If you send me an email at alexinicolewrestling at gmail.com or send me a DM, um, I can show you what I've got for sale. I do have them up on my Twitter, I believe, of what I've still got available. It's by pin tweet. Um, but I still have 8x10s if you're interested. I also have some T-shirts on me personally. For most T-shirts, go to prowrestlingtees.com slash bubblegum. Um, I have all of them there, including I've got my newest shirt, which is uh, if you've seen They Live, you'll know what it's kind of supposed to be. Um, and that was um, that's brand new. I haven't printed those myself yet. So and people have been asking me for them. I don't have them on me just because of everything that's going on right now. That is the only place you can get them. So if you do want my brand new shirts, along with every other shirt I've had in the past, go to Pro Wrestling Tees slash Bubblegum. Um, if you want an 8x10, send me an email, and we can figure it out from there. All right, great. Oh, fantastic. Um, I, I just want to thank you so much for joining me today. It was an absolute pleasure having you on and uh as i said a number of times during the podcast you're you're extremely talented uh you will be resting on tv in five years like you said you you're hoping and uh you have a great future in in professional wrestling thank you i really appreciate that thank you so much for having me my pleasure my pleasure well this has been shooting up north i'm lewis carlin you can hear us on the impact lounge and until next time thank you very much take care bye bye Stay safe, everyone. So long. Bye-bye.